good, Green Screen Entertainment fans? Your boy Jay Green is back, finally. I know it's been a minute, but right now, I'm about to bring y'all my review for The Fate of the Furious. Now, the Fast and the Furious franchise is growing at an alarming rate. It's mind-boggling how much money these movies are making at the box office and how many more cast members they can add to these damn things. Now, I'm going to tell you like this. I am a major Fast and the Furious fan. Fan. The first Fast and the Furious was directed by Rob Cohen, the second one John Singleton, and the next four Justin Lin, and then Fast and the Furious 7, James Wan. Now James Wan had a big task. He had to deal with the untimely passing of Paul Walker. Rest in peace. How long will they move next year? But with Fast and the Furious 7, I did like it, but as I had repeat viewings, I started to like it less and less. This movie is directed by F. Gary Gray, and I do feel that it is a step up from Fast and the Furious 7. Now, for those of you out there who have no clue whatsoever what the fate of the Furious is, I'm going to break it down like this. Now, this movie picks up with Dom and Letty on their honeymoon. They're doing the love thing, but at one point in time, he's got to go out with some refreshments. He's going to go get some milk and cookies from the corner market. Now, while he's out on his trip, he runs into Charlize Theron's character. She basically tells him, yo, dog, what's cracking, man? I know who you are. I know who you with. I know where you're from. I know all your people. But guess what? You about to betray them from me. I got a job for you. He's like, why would I do that? You know how he be talking. But she tells him some stuff in his ear that has him betray his squad. Now, on the mission that they're going on is basically to get this big weapon that can devastate cities. He goes, betrays his team, steals that weapon, brings it to her. Next thing you know, his team is after him and her throughout the entire film. That's all y'all need to know right now. Alright y'all, so just to be thorough, I'm going to give you a little bit of a breakdown about what I didn't care for in part 7 that I started to notice more and more upon repeat viewings. One, I feel that the previous Fast and the Furious movies had created a universe that told us what our characters could survive, what they could withstand, and what their vehicles could do. In part 7, that shit went straight up out the fucking window. Nobody could die in part 7. There was head-on collisions, no one's getting cuts, bruises, concussions, whiplash, nothing. I don't believe that shit for one minute. Also, these cars are floating out of big-ass jets, and they're just relying on the wind to guide them to their locations on this nothing road in the middle of nowhere. Get the fuck out of here. I don't believe that shit either. Also, the plot line for part 7 was all over the damn place. All we needed was Jason Statham hunting our dudes, trying to take them out one by one. Look, either he's going to find us and take us out, or we're going to find him and take his ass out. But instead, we're hunting him, we're looking for the God's Eye, we're trying to find Ramsey who can control the God's Eye, but we're trying to get her out of the clutches of Jaman Hansu. Give me a fucking break. I was lost through half the damn movie, and I watch movies all the time. What I love about what F. Gary Gray did for this movie as a director was that he brought us back to a little bit more gritty, a little bit more grimy, fast and the furious. He also gave us a better plot line throughout the film that was easier to follow and easier to understand a, why would Dom actually turn his back on family? Let's be realistic. Throughout all seven movies, Dom is all about family. It's got to be a big thing that's going to have him turning his back on family. What is it? If you watch the trailers, you might conclude, based on Charlize Theron's uh, technology capabilities, if you will, that it's this or it's that. It's something that's very believable, it's very grounded, it's very realistic, it's very old school, but I loved it and it worked for me. Also, I think that F. Gary Gray gave us some really great action and some great one-liners and a lot more fun than we had with James Wan in part seven. Now, I'm not going to fault James Wan for that. Remember, like I said, he had a big job that he had to do, which was make Fast and the Furious 7 as great as it could be dealing with the untimely passing of Paul Walker. And if his untimely passing changed some things that they were already planning for the film or the way that the plot was supposed to go, then that is what it is, and that's unfortunate. It still came out good, and I still did enjoy it. But I do feel that F. Gary Gray brought Fast and the Furious up another notch from where part 7 was based on his directing capabilities. Now, of course, as every Fast and the Furious movie grows, the cast grows as well. And in this movie, we're getting the entire cast of characters. But I would definitely say that The Rock and Jason Statham stole the show. The stuff that they do on screen together is fantastic. The chemistry they have is amazing. And their interactions with other characters is also great. The acting from everyone else is fine, but they are definitely the ones that I'm going to this movie theater, maybe again, 
in to see because they were fantastic on screen. The fighting is legit as well. We're seeing Jason Statham old school transporter style. You know what I'm talking about. What the Now y'all know that I don't like to spoil too much, so I can't really say much more about this movie. The plot is not that complex. But I will say, this movie definitely was a great time at the movie theater. It was better than I thought. I did go in with really low expectations based on the trailers and based on what I came out of thinking about part 7 after I saw repeat viewings. But it was fun at the movie theater, worthy of your peanut M&Ms, worthy of your popcorn, and definitely worthy of a trip to the cinema. I say go check it out for sure this weekend. I will also say, because I gotta keep it real, that the Fast and the Furious franchise did peak with part six. Four, five, and six were great to me, and they only got better. Part seven, a little step down. This movie, a slight step up. So we'll see what happens going into the future with this franchise, but I thought F. Gary Gray did a great job. I thought everybody acting in the movie was fine, but Jason Statham and The Rock definitely steal the show. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it real. You know I love to share my thoughts and feelings with you guys, so I'm sorry that I haven't been here for a quick minute, but I'm back now. There are definitely some great movies that I am looking forward to this summer, and I'm excited to share my thoughts and feelings with all of y'all out there. So, I hope you like what you saw here, and if you did, do me a favor, click that like, click that subscribe button, and I'm gonna holla at y'all later. Your boy, he's out.